hear me? Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Center for Graduate Life and Learning. Uh, we hope that everybody is uh, having a great start of the semester. Uh, my name is Sami. I'm a Global Liner graduate assistant here. Uh, many of you already uh, are already acquainted with our activities. For those of you who are new at the CGLL, our mission is to provide a comfortable and safe environment where graduate students and postdoctoral fellows can network and get personal and professional support to enhance their career success. We organize various uh, events every week on a regular basis to help you get through the challenges of graduate life. Uh, you'll find out about these events on our website, and I'm going to put that link uh, of our events calendar on the chat. So today we are uh, partnering with the Prof School of Professional Studies Department at ENC Charlotte to inform you about the professional certifications, such as the Lean Six Sigma. Uh, that can increase your potential as a candidate and chances of getting hired and also become more successful in your career. Uh, we are incredibly honored to work with the School of Professional Studies uh, and we thank them for the time and their effort to help us out with this, uh, especially our guest speaker, Dr. Jonathan Mayhern, and uh, uh, who's a master trainer and he teaches all the Six Sigma courses at UNC Charlotte. And also his contributions are massively renowned uh, in this field throughout the country. Uh, we also have with us today, Ms. Uh, Samantha Abt Bumgarner, and uh, the program, she, she's the program director of continuing education at UNC Charlotte. Actually, she is uh, the one that is organizing everything for this session today, and uh, we cannot appreciate enough for her support. Uh, so with that further ado, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Baumgartner, and at the end of this, uh, Dr. Mayhorn's session, you'll have time to answer, uh, ask your questions, and uh, so, Sam? Thank you so much, Sammy, and welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you with us today for a little while as we talk about um, Lean Sigma, Lean Six Sigma a little more, and how it may be more meaningful for you. Um, welcome back to the semester. It's nice to see all of your faces. And I know Jonathan may say this again, but we want to keep this as casual and informative as we can. So as Jonathan's talking, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. If he doesn't see them right away, I'll kind of flag him and make sure um, I'll, I'll politely interrupt him and make sure that he knows um, what questions are out there. And then, then at the end, we are very welcome to answer any questions you might have. Feel free to come off mute at that time and ask any questions. This is really just to give you as much information as we can. So um, just to talk a little bit about what we're going to discuss over this next little bit with you. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what um, the School of Professional Studies actually is. That's uh, where all these Lean Six Sigma certifications run out of at UNC Charlotte. Um, I'll introduce again, Jonathan Mayhorn. He's gonna do a majority of the speaking today and he's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about those certifications. Um, what is Lean Six Sigma? Um, he's gonna go into a little bit more detail on that and how Lean Six Sigma is applicable today um, and in what industries it's most applicable. Um, he's gonna talk about what the benefits of earning any of our Lean Six Sigma certifications are, um, how the belt system works. There are many colors of belts, so he's gonna go into a little bit more detail into each of those. Um, he's gonna discuss what courses we actually offer um, the prices and discounts for those courses. And you'll wanna hang on for that because we did just um, launch a graduate student discount for all of you. So we'll go over that a little bit at the end and how to register. So we look forward to talking with you about all of that. So first I wanted to talk a little bit about what is the School of Professional Studies. Um, our offices are actually housed at our Dubois Center at UNC Charlotte Center City. That's a little photo of it, uh, the entrance right there. Um, we offer through the School of Professional Studies classroom-based courses. We offer online courses. We offer live online courses. Um, we offer certifications, exam preps, and sometimes really just one-day courses on a particular topic. Um, the target for most of our courses are professionals or people who are getting into um, a professional uh, career. 
um, whether they're currently in one or looking to actually move into something a little bit different um, in their current profession. Um, we try to create certificate programs to teach them how to do something new or teach them how to do something better. So that's kind of our goal um, and what we're doing. And I want to introduce you to Jonathan Mayhorn, who's going to do a majority of the talking today. Um, he is the owner of Life Leaders, um, where he both consults and teaches um, and coaches. He has earned his PMP, which is a he's a project management professional. So he's taken that exam and, and is now a designated PMP. Um, he's a master black belt. Um, he has a, a master's in mechanical engineering and holds a doctor of strategic leadership. He's also an author. And as we talked about a little earlier, he is actually the instructor for all six of our Lean Six Sigma certifications through UNC Charlotte. So I'm gonna put myself on mute and I'm gonna turn it over to Jonathan and he's gonna take it from here. Thank you, Sam, for the introduction. And Sammy, thank you for setting this up. Um, we, we truly appreciate it. it. It's good to connect everyone together. And you know, all these belts are out there, so why not connect to some of the grad students that are gonna be or in industry right now or about to go into industry if they're, if they're not already. So with that, let me go ahead and get started here. Um, so, so some of you may have already had a little bit of introduction on Lane Six Sigma, especially if you've had business courses or operation courses, and they may have just touched the surface in, in grad school on that. Um, so let, let me give you my definition of what Lane Six Sigma is as a practitioner for many years now. Um, so I, I tend to think of it as the organization's business management strategy. So what I mean by that is when you, if you've been in an organization before, you're about to go into one, you probably see that they have a top five strategic and that every CEO or vice president wants to work on for 2022. Well, somebody needs to break down those strategic initiatives into projects in order to meet those goals. So that's kind of where LinkedIn comes in. We use data analysis and process analysis to drive that business management strategy to meet the goals of the organization. And as you can imagine, if you can meet the goals of the organization, they're gonna keep you. They're gonna promote you. Um, they like people that do special projects. And that's, that's kind of what I train people on is, uh, can you be that person to set yourself apart from everybody else? Can you think differently than everybody else in terms of data analysis, process analysis? So some of the methodologies I'm gonna talk about today at a high level is we have this something called DMAIC, which reduces defects, waste, and cycle time in processes. Because that's very important for organizations to reduce all that. And it saves them money, saves them time, improves customer experience. But also I teach the tools in order of how to facilitate change in those existing processes. So change management, change leadership. And there's another methodology that we use called DMAVI that where we design new processes and products from scratch. Sometimes everything is so messed up or everybody's doing the process or differently in the organization that you just wanna start over. And so that's why I teach that methodology as well. And then you've probably heard of lean. Lean is for speed, reducing cycle time. Six Sigma is for quality to reduce defects and waste in the process and make the process more efficient. So over the last 11 years that I've been teaching Lean Six Sigma at UNC Charlotte, I've merged those two together, Lean for Speed, Six Sigma for Quality, and we call it Lean Six Sigma. So we get the best of both worlds to, to pretty much tackle any type of problem in the world. So you've heard the term Six Sigma before, but what are people really talking about when they say that? Whether you're in a service-based industry or manufacturing, it doesn't matter. As long as you can define what a defect is for your particular process as a project team, then you can put it on a Six Sigma scale. So we've done a lot of services in the last decade. As things are shifting, as manufacturing shrinks and services increase, we have to be adaptable. And that's kind of what we've done with, with teaching. I teach at both settings, manufacturing and services. It doesn't matter, you can use it anyway. Let's look at an example of a Six Sigma scale. So if anyone's gonna file their taxes this year and by April, April 18th for the IRS, we're hoping that we get refunds, right? Well, let's say the IRS 
gets 1 million people filing their tax returns. And let's say they, they define a defect as anything that takes more than three weeks to get your refund. Then we're putting that out of a million chances for a defect, how many defects did the IRS have? If it took longer than three weeks for you to get your refund, that is a defect. So let's say the IRS out of a million applications for a refund, they were only able to process, or they had 691,000 that took more than three weeks. 691,000 defects. They're operating at a one sigma. If only 308,000 of those refunds took longer than three weeks, they're operating at a two sigma. You see, as the defects decrease, the sigma level goes up. Higher sigma, the better that process is operating at. If they only had 66,000 defects that took longer than three weeks to issue that refund, they're operating at a three sigma. 6,000 defects, four sigma. 233 defects out of a million, five sigma. If they only had three people that did not receive their refund in three weeks, they're operating at a six sigma. They're doing an awesome job. So you can do that with any process in the world and figure out where you are currently and your sigma level. And the project is to improve that sigma level by lowering the defects and you move up the sigma level. Now, most human processes, if you have no computers involved, no machines, you're operating at a two and a half sigma, which means you have about 150,000 defects per million chances to make a defect. That is why we need a lot of people in the world to think like this, because there's so many messed up processes out there that the customer gets hurt. The employees get hurt. Em employee morale goes down. There's a lot of inefficiency out there. In fact, they say that 80% of all the steps in every process in the world that hasn't been studied is non-value added to the customer. That means most processes are only 20% efficient. That's pretty bad, isn't it? You've probably been to places where they've had poor customer experience and that this is the reason for that. So that's why we need more people like you to go out there and learn this mindset. And then when you get in your organizations, you're making that change happen. You're leading these projects or these initiatives. So um, I asked Sam to have some of her staff put together an infographic of all the people that have taken my Lean Six Sigma courses in the last 11 years at UNC Charlotte. Where were those people from? What, were, what industries were they from? And if you've ever seen these infographics, you probably know that the larger the word, that means more people came from that particular industry. So of all the students that have taken the Lean Six Sigma courses over the decade plus, um, it seems like education was the number one place that they came from. Healthcare and financial were, were, were in the banking capital of the world here. So banking and financial were very big. We get a lot of people from the banking industry take these courses. Um, Bank of America, Wachovia, they're all very big on Lean Six Sigma. They have big programs and they hire a lot. Um, IT, supply chain. I've seen IT in the last half decade pick up a lot because when you're trying to automate something, you have to improve the process before you can automate it. Otherwise you're just automating those defects. So IT has been a big thing recently in supply chain too. Um, then you see some other ones, textiles, we still get those. Uh, the government, we have local governments and the federal and state governments to take our courses. Um, airplane industry, aviation, consumer goods, retail was big. We had a lot of grocery stores that took our, that launched our six statement programs through UNCC, through us. Uh, utilities, I came from at and so that they had a huge program there. Um, so you can kind of see automotive, um, automation, all these things, marketing, pretty much everywhere. I've seen people from all walks of life take these courses because processes are everywhere. And even the self-employed. So why do we need Lean Six Sigma? Because what I just said, all activities take place in terms of a process. Every product in the world that you have in front of you or that you consume or every service, it takes a process. I'm not saying they're all good processes, but it takes a process to make a product or service. Most people don't think like that. So if you can be the one that has that mindset that, that I'm teaching, that you can go out there and improve the process, then your product, your outputs, your product or your service is going to be better to the downstream customer.
So the quality of that process determines that. And without a customer, we don't have what? An organization. And without an organization, you and I don't have a job. And without a job, we can't pay our bills, right? And provide for families. So it's very, very important that we take the voice of the customer and we translate that into the process and improve that for the customer experience. Now, sometimes your customer is the downstream department. For example, when I was in engineering at AT&T, my customer was construction. I designed jobs for them. If I didn't understand that, if I thought my end customer was AT&T, their customer, then I probably designed a bad job. It was construction that had to work my jobs. So you have to think about that too, internal customers. Most people think in terms of isolated events. Every process in the world works like this. You have some kind of supplier who gives you some kind of tangible input into the process. That process is transforming those inputs into an output. And those outputs are going to a downstream customer. That could be an next department up, internal customers, or the real customer at the end. Everybody serves a customer. So if you can make sure you don't have garbage in, garbage out, make sure you improve the process, then you're going to improve the customer experience. The organization is going to do better. They're going to save time and money. Employees are going to be happy. And it just all works to raise everybody up. That's why the world needs Lean Six Sigma. And what I talked about, about the 80% inefficiencies in every process that hasn't been studied. So there are four methodologies that are in my courses that, that I've written. Uh, DMAIC, improving existing processes. This is probably about 70 to 80% of all the projects in the world that probably could use DMAIC because those processes already exist. If you do that process today, then it exists, even if you don't have a process map. You're looking for root causes that you don't know what, what the real root cause is. You don't know the solution, but you're trying to reduce those defects by defining what a defect is, like I did in the IRS example. Demand B, oh, by the way, may stands for define five phases of a project. Define, measure the problem, analyze the root causes, improve those root causes with solutions, and then control, that's putting a sustainment plan to maintain the gains long after your project team walks away. Will this process be in place five, 10 years from now? The MAVI stands for define, measure, analyze. So the first three letters are the same. Design something new and verify, test it to make sure it works and make tweaks before you do full scale rollout. So if your process does not exist today, or you don't know a solution and there's so much variation between how your organization does that process and you just want to start over and design it right the first time or the next time you use DMAVI. About 20% of the, of the projects I see are DMAVI. So I teach both those methodologies for case studies and projects and coaching. Lean is kind of merged underneath the umbrella of the DMAIC called the Lean DMAIC. I've merged those two together in the methodology. That's reducing non-value added steps to the customer, eliminating the waste and reducing the cycle time and streamlining that process. You've probably heard of Agile in the last 15 years or so, but if you wanna make a product and you wanna make that product in smaller increments and take it back to the customer, let's say you're doing a website and you wanna do 20% of the website and then take it back to the customer or your stakeholders and say, hey, do you, do you like what I did with the shell of the website? What else would you like to see? And then you go work on a sprint for four weeks and you come back and get 40%. Say, hey, look at these drop down menus I got. Then you come back and you got 60%. You say, look at these wizards and charts and graphs I've got. That's very, very powerful to go back to the customer and get their voices along the way every few weeks instead of, hey, let's get their voices in the beginning. And then six months later, we design something and then they may have changed their mind. That's a big thing in organizations now. Leaders want you to design what they need today. So we've mixed agile in there as well. I'm, I'm a big believer in mixed methodologies. We do what the, the world needs right now. So that's why we brought agile and lean into the fold you know, in the last half decade. So what are some benefits to you if you take Lean Six Sigma certifications? It is an independent certification, not certificate, certification. There's a big difference there. Certification, you have to take a testing standard. There has to be a governing body, which is UNC Charlotte. 
So you have to demonstrate knowledge. That's why there's a test after every belt that I teach. And not only that, but you have to walk the walk. We do a lot of case studies and real world projects because you have to be able to do these tools, not just talk about them and take a test. You have to actually be able to apply them to an organization. And as you saw in that in industrial infographic, just about every industry needs Lean Six Sigma and people that think like that, people that are certified in that. And the, there's a lot of employers that hire or promote based on whether you have a certain belt level. So if you go to Glassdoor and you, you Google um, how much a black belt makes or a green belt makes or a master black belt makes, you'll see that those numbers are very, very up there in the median salaries for a reason, because they're paying you for that knowledge. Can you walk the walk to help them improve these processes? And it also demonstrates, just like your degree is going to do, that you committed to something. You committed to a green belt or a black belt or a master black belt, and you saw that through, and you were trained by a master black belt coach such as myself, and you studied under that person. We call them senseis because you study under that person. You study under me, who I studied under the people that invented Six Sigma. So you're getting the true representation of the original um, methodology, but that I've adopted to the world today. But it's very important who you study under and, and how you do these methodologies. So the belt systems at UNC Charlotte, um, these are all the ones that we have. We have a white belt, which I'm gonna talk about more detail on the next several slides, but think of a white belt as just an introduction. Everybody in the organization gets a couple hours of training or whoever takes it, and they, they can speak the vocabulary of Six Sigma. So if, if a project team comes out to you at work and they say, hey, we're doing a Six Sigma project, you're like, oh, I'm a white belt. I know what you're talking about and I can help. I can give you information, I can collect data. So that's very important. Um, if you're trying to change the culture for everybody to be white belt trained, yellow belt, is a little bit higher, it takes a little bit longer, but it's for team members on Six Sigma projects or data collectors. Green Belt is kind of like the entry level project manager. So if you wanna run these projects, this is my most popular course because a lot of people want to run a Lean Six Sigma project. And that's exactly what we teach you, how to walk that walk and do that. Now, Black Belt, it sounds a little more serious like in karate, right? Black Belt's a little bit, bigger projects, deeper, save more money, more data analysis, and they coach green belts as well. And so in that course, we teach a little bit more about coaching and building leading powerful teams um, and data analysis. Master black belt, that's, kind of, that's what I am. That's the sensei, that's the coach, the teacher of the methodology. They might be a program manager for a Lean Six Sigma program at an organization. Um, so, so we teach a little bit more program management. And then champion, we call it orange belt. Orange belt is on the same level as a yellow belt in terms of how much time you spend in the course. But orange belt for champions is the mid-level leaders in the organization that they're not gonna run the projects, but they're gonna sponsor the green belt or black belt that is running the project. They might be the directors of the organization, the vice presidents, but that's very important because they report to senior leadership, they remove roadblocks, they support the, the black belt or green belt in their project and give them resources and coach them from the business side. Whereas I coach them from the methodology side, from Six Sigma, the champion coaches them from the business based on their experience. So let's dive a little bit deeper into each course that we offer here. By the way, they're all, they're all 365 days a year online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These courses never end. I mean, your course might end, but they reset. So there's always a way to get into a course. So White Belt is eight short videos. We found that um, most people can't concentrate nowadays for more than six minutes. They might turn the video off. So I've tried to get all my videos down to six minutes or less to teach a topic or two in six minutes. We had a stu recording studio in UNCC Cameron building. And it's a blue screen because you can't hide the green the green from UNCC, but it's blue screen and all the PowerPoints have been taken out and things fly in next to me. You'll see a picture in a minute here. Um, but those eight short videos is two hours of online training. 
you complete one discussion post and I get automatic emails of every time someone completes an assignment within a few minutes, I'm usually at my computer responding. Uh, I try to do that as best as I can. But you take a 16 question test and then it resets every month for 12 months. So that means you get 30 days to do that white belt and then it will reset for the next month so that more people can, can take the course. So remember, this is for anyone that wants to learn more about the concepts. Especially like operator level and organization, you probably want them to take white belt. Yellow belt steps up, seven hours of training. You watch more videos, um, complete a discussion post, how you can apply the methodology to, to your workplace. Or if you're in school, that's fine too. Um, you're gonna complete a case study where you go through the tools of the Elaine Demaic project. Take a 25 question test and it resets every two months. So you get two months for this course. Right now, the course is going from January through February and then it resets in March and goes March and April. Whenever you jump in, um, the system, the registration system will know which one to put you in based on how much time they've allotted for you to take that course. And I, I give you feedback on every, every assignment right as soon as I can, usually that day. And so the, for anyone who wants to be a team member or contributor to Lean Six Sigma projects or collect data. Orange Belt, this is that project champion level. It's the same number of hours and videos as, as the Yellow Belt. You complete small assignments um, on coaching and leadership, strategic leadership, and a little bit about how to support the Green Belts and Black Belts as a project champion. Two months again, it's running from January to February now. Another one comes in March and April. I give you feedback throughout the course. And so this is for those mid-level leaders that want to champion a project. And there's the green screen. Um, it's really a blue screen, but there's the, the screen. I'm in front of the screen and then they'll have words and pictures and templates flying behind me that the editors have done at UNCC. Um, but those very short six minute videos. So green belt, we just redid this um, at the beginning of last year. And I've got a couple of case studies in there that are pandemic related. And there's one for Demaic, improving existing process with, with lean in it. And then one for Demavi, designing a new process. There's more agile change management in there. You take a 50 question test. We've got a couple of cool new games in there. Um, we've got a Jeopardy game that you play to prepare for the test. And we've got um, something called the John Cotter model game, which prepares you for how to be a change, change leader very interactive games that we've had developers help us with. And you get coaching from me and feedback throughout the course. Now those courses last for four months. You could finish them sooner, um, but they reset three times a year. So basically every quarter. Uh, the current one runs through February 28th and then we got another one starting March 1st. So anyone who wants to be a project manager or lead these projects or special projects at work, this is our most popular course. Um, it seems like everybody wants to make a career move or they're being asked to do more work, they take this course because it really helps you, uh, you know, jumpstart that career even more. Black Belt, fewer people take this because it's, it takes more time, right? It takes six months, up to six months, and it resets twice a year. We have one course going from January 1st to June 30th, and then it resets July 1st and goes through December 31st. Now, you can jump in now or any time, you still have enough time. Um, so don't worry about that. And if for some reason we don't, we have someone that doesn't finish, um, it is possible to roll people over into the next section with the help of registration, registration desk. Um, but try to finish it, but if you can't, you know, don't sweat it, we'll, we'll figure it out. So you watch 30 short videos that, that I created and you complete a real world project at work or school. And I coach you through that. You know, we could do Zoom calls, um, we could do email, we could do whatever you want to get through that. And I'm not gonna leave you hanging on an island. I'm gonna be there with you throughout the whole project. And as you can see, this is more data analysis, more lean, more agile, more coaching and building leading powerful teams. So it comes with the whole six months that I, I coach you through. Master Black. But a few people will rise to the decision after they take their black belt. And maybe you're leading a program office, a continuous improvement program office, or maybe you just want to coach and teach more black belts and green belts. 
um, then this is the course for you. 35 hours of short videos again. Complete a real world project to improve your continuous improvement program at work or start one for your organization. Uh, you have to coach others through their project. Yeah, you have to help me teach a little bit. Take a 50 question test. This one resets kind of like the green belt three times a year, pretty much every quarter. We got one running through February 28th right now and then another one starting March 1st. So if you want to lead, teach, a coach, um, or have a program office, or being asked to do that, this would be the course for you up to a year of coaching with me. Okay, so when, when you go to um, the continuing edu education page for Six Sigma, you're gonna see this little grid here. And these are the prices for the Lean Six Sigma belts. Now, I have the full, full price on there. That's what you're gonna see on the website. For example, the white belt is $125 for anyone that signs up. Um, but, but Sam has um, worked with uh, the graduate school and her staff to, to give everyone on this call and everyone that's a grad student at UNC Charlotte a discount, a 20% discount on all the belts um, that I teach for them. So to give you an example, if you take the white belt, 20%, is $25 off, you're gonna get the white belt for $100. Keep in mind that's one month of access. Yellow belt and orange belt, same price. Um, you get two months of access. Normally you pay 250, but grad students are gonna pay $200, so $50 off. The green belt is normally $1,400 for four months of access and coaching. And normally you pay 1,400, but you'll get that for 1,120 as a grad student. And then block belt is normally 2,950. That's six months course, you know, six months of coaching. And that's normally $29.50, you get it for $23.60. And then Master Black Belt, that's that's our, our big course, um, which if you go to Glassdoor, Master Black Belts make $125,000 plus a year. So it's, it's a big deal in the industry. But if you, if you rise to that occasion, it's normally $4,600, um, but you, make, uh, you pay $3,680 for the 20% discount. Jonathan? Um, I just yeah. wanted to add one quick thing while you're on this slide that um, yeah. I think is important. Um, for everyone to remember, and that is some of these belts don't have prerequisites, meaning you don't have to start with the white belt. Um, for example, if you were only interested in the orange belt, you don't need the white or the yellow belt prior to taking the orange belt. Same goes for the green belt. You could lead off with the green belt if that was something that seemed most applicable to what you're looking to do um, with your work. Uh, where we do have prerequisites is where you get into the black belt, and the master black belt, um, you need to have the green belt completed prior to registering for the black belt. And um, similarly, you need to have the black belt completed prior to registering for the master black belt. But otherwise, white, yellow, orange, or green, you can come in at any of those. Um, you certainly can build off of them, but if, if there's one that's just you know more advantageous for you than another, um, feel free to lead off without working on others prior to it. No, that's an excellent point, Sam. Um, you know, I get the, I, I'm sure Sam gets this question a lot. I get it a lot. Can I just jump right into the green belt? Yeah, sure. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, and why would you want to do that? Because if, if your new role is going to have projects, then maybe you don't want to spend the time in yellow. Because because I promise me, you, you're going to get a lot in green belt that, that might have been covered in yellow. I mean, that a little bit might have covered in, covered in yellow, but you're going to get it all in green. Um, that's perfectly okay, but like Sam said, you can't just jump into black because you need to be a green belt and have that experience, especially the, the case studies that I teach, before you can do the black belt. Or you have to have a green belt at another organization, which we recognize that as long as it's a decent organization that, that meets certain criteria, we do recognize green belts from outside of UNCC if you want to jump into black belt and you've had a green belt before. Um, same thing with master black belt. If you've had a black belt before, then just show us, you know, a website or show us maybe I guess a, a transcript or something, right, Sam? And, and we'll look at that real quick to see if it's up to par. Uh, we have too many people. Most people have pretty good programs that they went to, um, but that's an excellent point. Okay, so there's three ways to register. If I get this wrong, just let me know, Sam. But online, 
um, you can go to continuing ed.uncc.edu forward slash Chick Sigma. Um, when you go there, I think you're going to see that page that I just showed with, with all the pricing. And then click on the belt. See how that's the, the white, yellow, orange, green, black, master black belt is in green? That's a hyperlink. If you click on those belts, it's going to take you to the individual registration page for each of those belts. And it's going to give you a short video, probably with me on it talking about that course, a little promo. That's gonna give you a little bit more detail about what, who those courses are for, kind of some of the stuff I explained today. And then it's gonna have a registration button that you can register for that course. So that's one way you can register. Another is by phone. You can see that 704 number 687-8900. Um, I think we still have two people, right Sam, that sit on the registration desk during eight to five every day, Monday through Friday. and um, those ladies are very helpful. They, they know all about me, Sam, and the, the belts. And, and they can help you register if you call them, if you don't want to do it online. Especially if your company's paying for it and, and there's a weird way you got to pay, um, they're very good at that or helping you with that. And then, of course, by email, um, the same people that, man, that take care of the phones for the registration desk for all school professional studies courses, they also have an email, um, CE registration at uncc.edu. So, so they check that Monday through Friday, eight to five, and they can help you register there as well. Okay, so this is the new thing that we've added before this session for graduate students at UNC Charlotte. This is a new thing. We typically don't give discounts to the belts. Um, they're very popular. Um, the, there's just typically we haven't done that in the past, but but we figured you're, you're in graduate school, you could probably use a discount. We all need a little bit, right? Um, but it also helps you to further your career too. So in this partnership, we, we have a new way to, to get the 20% discount. When you go to that registration page online that I talked about, and let's say you register for, this one's the master black belt. Let's say you click on the master black belt registration button. You're gonna see that initial price of 4,600, but you're gonna see a new feature that we have where in the middle of my screen, it says apply a discount. So hit that checkbox and then you're gonna see a drop down menu. And your options are none, um, loans, I guess they have loans you could do, pay as you go, or graduate student discount. So that's the new thing that we've added to the drop down menu. You click on that and let me show you the next screen. So once you've got that graduate student discount in the drop down menu, the price will automatically change. In this case, 20% less is $920 off. So it goes from the 4,600 to the 3,680. And that's the most expensive course, the master black belt, because it, it takes coaching for a whole, whole year by myself, you know, working with people on Zoom and all that. Um, but it also is one of the belts that, that pays the most in industry too, that helps. But that's how you use the, the discount option for any of the belts. And then you hit check out and then you can pay. So I think that was the last slide. So we're gonna to go to the Q&A session. And what I would like everyone to do would help me out. If you have a question, I want you to use the chat feature. And, and that helps us in several ways, helps my poor hearing so I can, I can read things, uh, but it also helps so that maybe if we see the same question a couple of times, I can just answer it once. So I'm gonna pull the, the chat window up on my screen. Uh, make sure you chat to everyone so we can see it. And that dro blue drop down menu. And then type your questions, hit enter, and then I'll, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Or if there's a question for Sam, she can answer that. So what kind of questions do you have about registration, the belts? Okay, the requirements for the green belt. So there is no prerequisite for the green belt, which means you can jump straight into that. You don't have to have a yellow belt to get a green belt. Yes, you can join the courses anytime. Um, and Sam might know better than I do, but when you register for a course, it, it somehow knows which section to put you in. Um, what I mean by that, let, let's say you're getting, you're taking the, you're going to register for the green belt and that ends February 28th. There's a certain date that they have in the system where they won't let you register for the February 28th course. It'll put you in the March 1st course. We do that on purpose because you need some time to do some of these courses. 
Um, I, I don't know the dates, Sam, but do, is that kind of how yeah, it works? I mean, the easiest thing for you to keep in mind is you can literally register anytime you want to. Our system won't let you register for a course that's not if it's not going to give you enough time to complete the course. But here's the best part is um, if you need more time to complete it and our section, that particular section is coming to a close earlier than you wanted it to, um, we just ask that somebody shoot us an email. We'll just move you into the next section. We don't charge for this. We want you to be able to have time to complete the program um, in the time frame that best suits your schedule. So um, just for your knowledge, just know that you can register, you can start at any time, you can start today, you can start next week, you can start next month, you can start on a Sunday. Um, and then you just work at your own pace within reason. We love for people to try to complete within um, a reasonable amount of time and we watch you. So um, we know how you're doing. But, um, you know, if you ever need more time and need to move into the next section, we've worked with um, many, many people who've needed to do that. So um, you can just keep that in mind. Thank you, Sam. Um, so there was an updated question, what is needed for completion of the green belt? And so I just rewrote that course last year. And so I used to do it where you had to have a project at work, but during the pandemic, it was it was too hard for people to find projects. So I've got that down to two case studies. You watch 20 short videos. You're building those case studies after each six minute video, you're doing an assignment and you're building those, the storyboard, I call it the project from beginning to end. Um, so all you have to do is complete those two case studies, take a test. Uh, I'm coaching you through it the whole time. Play Jeopardy a little bit there to prepare for the test. Um, and then you get certified. So we've had people complete that in as short as a month and a half. And people take the whole four months. So it, it's go at your own pace. So the courses like show the, up in Canada. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Jonathan. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, Yes, so these courses um, are not dissimilar to, to likely what you're seeing um, through your graduate program. So once you register for courses um, through our School of Professional Studies, um, you'll get an email that allows you to access um, these Lean Six Sigma certification courses in Canvas. So you're exactly right. Um, that'll get pushed out to you from our office once you've registered. But yes, that's exactly where you'll find all the content. And I think it happened pretty quick. Once you register, it seems like my students get in there within within the day. I see their name pop into Canvas. Um, so it's pretty quick. Now, there was a question about the, the, the certification body, the organizing body for Six Sigma. Um, the answer to that is there is no governing body. And there's a reason for that. Um, the master black belts, the, the people before my time um, got together and they said, you know what? We can't agree upon everyone doing the same standards, so we just won't have one. So in our case, uh, we have a university. The University of North Carolina at Charlotte is the governing body. Kind of like where you get your degrees. I'm looking at my UNCC degrees here. Your certificates look very much like that. Uh, and we do uh, mail a hard copy. That was very important to us that you get a hard copy for green belt on up. Green belt, black belt, master black belt. You get that you know, seal of approval uh, from me. And Body. That's very important who, who you study under, right? And who approves that? Good question. Yeah, just a lot of people to add think on to it. that, um, yeah, Jonathan makes a good point. You know, there is no governing body. On the other hand, um, we offer a project management certificate where there is a, a very significant governing body, the Project Management Institute. So all of those courses in our School of Professional Studies, um, we actually already ha we have the seal of approval or a registered educational provider with that Project Management Institute because they are um, kind of the main governing body over that, um, that knowledge base. Um, but as Jonathan mentioned, not so much so for Lean Six Sigma. So we serve um, as kind of the governing body. And I know Jonathan discussed this, but that coaching aspect that goes along with the green, black, and master black um, it's pretty significant and um, is not often um, does not often show up in some of the other programs that offer these belts. Um, that's it's quite something that we we kind of specialized in, um, and it really sets us apart. So that's that's a great uh, portion of these certifications. And there's a reason why we do the coaching, and that's how I learned. Um, and if you're in a big organization, they might have their own master black belts, their own coaches. But a lot of places don't have that. 
So I'm kind of like the person that does that for, for all these different people that take these courses, you know, studying under someone that's been there, done that. And then hopefully by the after coaching through one project, you won't need me. I work myself out of that. And you can you might have me in your head, but you know how to do the project yourself the next time. Hey, Jonathan, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I have a quick question. In, in the beginning of your presentation, you talked about an example uh, from the IRS. I just want to know how did you calculate those numbers that ended up to one or two or three or six sig sigmas? So did you, can you repeat that question for me, Sam? Was it the? Yes, how you came upon um, working up those calculations for the two, uh, six sigma, six, six sigma mm -hmm, from the from the earlier slide. Oh, uh, the, the, the sigma levels. Um, actually, statisticians did that way back in the day. I think it was the mid 80s, um, but they studied processes. And let me move the chat room out of the way. And they figured out what, what a six sigma level was, how many standard deviations from the mean, basically. Um, is a typical process and those defects. So that it, you probably see it in some of your math courses, you might study this, but that, that's kind of what, you know, how many standard deviations from the mean your, your curve is, right? Um, so that's kind of where that came from, but that's where sig Sigma was founded on that. Okay, so how do we apply tools to that? How do we take that, uh, you know, statistical data and make sure that we can apply this to the real world? And, and that's why we keep it simple. Um, with explaining what a defect is, then we can put it on this scale. And sometimes you do it in but you don't need the six sigma scale. You're designing something new and creating that new metric. So, good question. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions? We have about 13 minutes left. Any questions about registration, the belts? Um, the use of it, uh, I see a lot of my former students um, go on to get different jobs after this. Okay, so we got a question popped in. What industries vary the certifications the most? Um, kind of like what you saw in the infographic, maybe 10 years ago, it was, it was more banking and utilities, but we've seen a big shift to more and more services. Um, even textiles made a comeback. We've got a lot of people recently, but I, I pretty much all of them now. What we're seeing, I think probably Sam sees this too, where we see people from just about every industry uh, coming into our courses because I think it's it's definitely made a comeback in the last 10 years. There was a time in the 90s where Six Sigma kind of went up to the wayside and now it's come back full circle because there's been so many leaders that recognize the need for it. So I think you'll be okay with any industry. Second one, do these certifications remain valid for a lifetime? That is correct. You do not have to retest or recertify. Once you're a green belt, black belt, master black belt, yellow belt, you're, you're that for life. So they don't expire. Um, recommendations for future for students in the future job applications or hiring process. Yes, um, make sure you put this on your LinkedIn profile and make sure that matches your resume as soon as you get certified by one of these belts because if that hiring manager knows what Lean Six Sigma is, they're gonna appreciate that. They're gonna appreciate that as a, as a starting point for that next position. Um, a lot of times that's a green belt, black belt is a requ requirement on a job, especially if it's process improvement, project management, um, any of those analyst positions, a lot of different positions, quality require green belt or black belt just to get the position. So make sure you put those on your um, resume and LinkedIn profile. And we'll include, um, we'll, we actually, in addition, I know Jonathan mentioned, we, we send you for the green, black, and master black. Um, we send you a physical um, certificate. You'll get an electronic certificate for any of the belts. Um, we also will um, send badging. So if you're on LinkedIn, as you're looking for jobs, um, in addition to mentioning that, of course, on your resume and elsewhere, um, we will send you one of those electronic badges um, to show your completion in one or more of these certifications. So you certainly can use that as well. Yeah, the white, the yellow are electronic and the orange and the green, black, master black, but you get both electronic and a hard copy to put on your wall. 
And we mailed you the hard copy for those top three belts. Uh, yeah, Sam mentioned lots of engineers take our courses. Um, I, I used to teach in the system engineering program, and just about everybody in that program got a green belt um, because that's what I, I the way I teach things. But a lot of former students came back. Yes, UNCC is on the certificate. It's very similar to, I'm looking at my diplomas up here from UNCC, but it's very similar to that diploma. It looks very similar. It says, um, yeah, it's from think, UNC Charlotte. School of Professional Studies. That's where you'll, um, that's where the certificate, um, who the certificate will be issued from. And I think it's signed by um, the director of the school, or is he associate provost of the School of Professional Studies? And I think Sam signs it too. Um, other, other questions? All right, well, hopefully you saw, um, I put my direct email address. If you have further questions, I put that in the chat. It's S-A-B-T-B-U-M at uncc.edu. So if you have any other questions that you think of along the way, if I can help you in any way, um, that's what we're here for. Um, we're here to support you throughout your graduate studies and beyond, so please, um, feel free to reach out to me, I'm glad to help. I can put you in touch with Jonathan. I see he's just sent you his email address as well, which is jpmayhorn, J-P-M-A-Y-H-O-R at uncc.edu. So please feel free to reach out to us, but we really thank you for being with us today and hearing a little bit more about the certifications, the Lean Six Sigma certifications and how they can best serve you as you move forward in your graduate studies. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Sammy, for hosting us. Thank you so much.